Where were the challenges you faced as a young person? Well, of course, we grew up in a uh, world that was uh, full of segregation, no matter where you lived, if you were African American. My dad was a doctor in Waterloo, and uh, but he had patients of both races. He had lot, you know, lots of white patients. But well, there were a lot of things we couldn't do growing up in Iowa. So I don't know if you even want to hear that. <laughs> we were just there was a lot of discrimination. I walk home to walk to junior high. Pass you'd go past East High, but. Uh, there was a place called Klondike's that would not let you eat ice cream in there. And I, would, I knew that you could file a civil rights case. The Iowa has a law, and people didn't take advantage of it then, but I, I was in junior high, and I went to the, up to their office and filed a case against the, the uh, ice cream place. Nothing came of it, but uh, you know, I thought I'd done something. Um, movies, uh, you could go to movies, but they generally would try to direct black kids to sit in the balcony, not sit on the main floor. And uh, again, my parents said, don't sit in, <laughs> don't sit in the balcony. We were kind of drilled to think living that way. My dad was president of the NAACP for a while. And uh, uh, let me think of, an, well, restaurants were pretty much old clothes then. A big problem was traveling if you were trying to take a trip because you couldn't, there were not hotels or motels. You either had to stay with friends or, um, you know, that was true even when my, my kids were growing up. And my, my husband, we'd go to, we'd be, my husband was at, went to Howard University in Washington, D.C. and we would drive back to Iowa and sometimes he would just pull over on the side of the road to take a nap, which is not a very safe thing to do. But, uh, and our social lives were different. They, as I said, grad school was mixed racially, and I uh, had several kids who were uh, white who were good friends of mine. We walked back and forth to school together and so on. But as soon as you hit junior high, it changed because they were the social thing. They had their different friends, and, like, you know, and the kids started dating and that sort of thing. And it, so. In fact, when I graduated from East High, the uh, principal called in two of my, I had two really good buddies who were black and they were athletes and very popular, but uh, occasionally they had danced with white girls at school parties and the principal called them in and told them they were not to do that at the prom. The prom was going to be at the electric, uh, what is it called, electric, ball, electric park ballroom in water that's still there. and. Uh, I called my friend who was the student council president, Tootie Frericks, he became a lawyer later. He was actually became a, he's white, he became a civil rights lawyer. And um, I said, let's, we, let's go talk to Mr. Hoffman, this is ridiculous. And uh, so we asked why he was doing, telling them that, and he said he wouldn't really tell us, and he just said, Lalea, you can always behave as you always do. I was, I was considered, I was a good student, I was considered pretty, Top, you know, the top of the, <laughs> whatever, top of the bunch, I guess, but, uh, and it, it was, it was ironic because my father was a, ate with Mr., <laughs> the, the principal, of, uh, I can't think of his name, I just said it and forgot it, Hoffman. He ate with him at one of the uh, clubs there downtown, and it's just so ridiculous, a lot of things, but. I don't like to talk about it too much because I almost feel like crying when I think about it.